Gang, we back, we back, we back on YouTube, Swaggy C and Austin. We in the building, man. We hope y'all enjoyed the video yesterday. You know, another trading strategy that I use heavily. Went into detail with you guys on that. But today's video, before I even get into it, I only want you guys to do one thing. Well, two things. Subscribe below and turn the bell on, please, right now, so you can be notified when all my videos drop, the very second it drops, and hit the like button. Hit the like button, hit the like button over and over and over again. That's all I'm asking for you guys to do. Other than that, enjoy the video. So we're going right into the video and I know this is a different scenery than you guys were expecting. You guys were expecting a market breakdown and I'm giving you guys a psychological breakdown because this video is more important than my last 10 videos combined. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but it's very, very important. So the best advice for small account traders is not to know everything about technical analysis and fundamental analysis, none of that at all. It's the mere concept that you're not going to make $100,000 in your first year. I got some advice, you know, about two, three years ago, you know, midway into my trading when I was expecting, why am I not making, you know, I see people making 50,000 and 20,000 and why am I not doing it? I'm only making 1,000 and 2,000 and I wasn't, you know, happy or content with where I was in my first year of trading. So. One of the advice I wanna tell you guys, if you have a small account, you need to treat it like a small account. You need to take profit if the market gives you 30 to 50 pips. Like that's not, it doesn't just give you that automatically. You accurately predicted the market would go up and it went up for 30 to 50 to 70 pips. And the issue with you guys is you guys wanna run it up to 200 pips and 300 pips. And you guys aren't swing traders. You don't even have the account size to be a swing trader. Your account size is good for scalping and intraday trading. And you're trying to get $2,000 per trade and you're still a beginner. You guys can understand, I'm five years into the market and the people you know who make more money than me, you know, who I learn from, they're, I think, they're nine, 10 years in who I learn from. And you guys gotta understand that if you can't make it past this first or second year, you're not going to get to where I am and sure it's not gonna get to where my mentors are right now. So my advice to you guys is if you have a small account and you're making money, I said this in my course, but I broke it down into like five videos in my course with Austin, I believe we did, but I'm just gonna make a YouTube video on it right now. One of the best key advice I gave to some of my students were out of the five, if you are up a certain amount of money, take profit because it doesn't seem like it's a lot of money because it's floating. You, you, like you're looking on your app, whether it's MetaTrader or you're on your brokerage, you know, your firm trading on, on that platform and you're up $500 and you're like, that's not a lot of money because you don't really see it or feel it. So you just let it run and let it run. You're like, oh, I want 2000, I want 5000. And that is an idiotic way to look at things because your account size is only 250. You basically done doubled, tripled, whatever the case may be, your account size already. You already got a 200% gain on that account size if you have 250 and you're up $500. You gotta understand and play the percentages. You're not trying to go from 250 to 25,000 in a week. That's not realistic unless you, you know, have been trading for five years and you're just doing it for fun at that point because I know people and I've done it before where it's like, oh, let me put $1,000 into an account and get it to 10,000 just for fun. Like, you know, like when you become an advanced trader, then you can start playing around for fun. But if you're really trying to grow a small account, you need to take the money that the market gives you. It is floating, but if somebody put $500 on this table right now, you're going to, I think I have, I think I only have a hundred in my account or not my account. Definitely got a hundred in my account, but in my wallet, I did with the Whole Foods last night. So this is a hundred dollars, right? You see this in the market all the time. How many times as a beginner trader have you been up a hundred dollars and you're just like, oh, okay, it is what it is. But this is a hundred dollars cash right here. If somebody put this on the table for you right now to, you know, take you're like, oh, nice hundred. Okay, cool. Okay, so my wallet, all right, I got 100. And that is one of the major issues you guys don't have. You guys don't, you guys aren't patient. And you need to be very, very disciplined and have a trading plan and follow through with it. Because when you have physical cash, you gotta understand, when you go to modify trade or close trade and you close it, that money is in your account. All you gotta do is transfer it to your bank account. So it's not like you gotta look at the market anymore and be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm nervous if this will you know, go against me or whatever. It's your money. You were up $1,000, you closed it, it's yours. Just put it in your bank account now at that point. And if you had $1,000 physically on the table, 
you would take it every single time. And that's one of the advice I give to small account traders. Build your account. Don't try to flip it. Don't try to get from $100 to $10,000 because as a beginner, it's not going to work. The, the alluring, I think that's a word, right? Alluring, right, Austin? Alluring, yeah. alluring. yeah, that's a word. Okay, shout out to me. Pat on the back. The alluring aspect of you know, trading in the market is there's no limitations on how much money you can make. And the issue, I say this all the time, the issue people have when they come into this market is they know that, so they think, all right, cool, in my first year, I'm going to make so much money, I'm gonna quit my job in my first two months, and that's not realistic. You need a few months to learn, learn from a mentor, learn from a program, go through trial and error on MetaTrader 4 or your brokerage firm and your platform. Like, you gotta lose a few trades to understand what you did wrong and then grow from that experience. You gotta go through all that. You can't skip the process. And the issue with people is they learn basic support and resistance basic trend lines and basic Fibonacci and they're like all right I'm gonna go on a live account and then they get on a live account and then they start losing money and they're like Forex is a scam stock trading is a scam options is a scam you don't know what you're doing point blank period you don't know what you're doing like did you you really think I was even making any kind of money like screw the money I'm making now and my first year I was losing money like my first year I was in college yes I dropped out of college to focus on this full time but at the end of the day, this, that wasn't my main income. It wasn't even an income for me. I was babysitting to make sure I paid the bills because I didn't want to work a nine to five. And until this, you know, Forex thing came about and came to fruition. But even when I started making money in the Forex market in 2016, late 2016, early 2017, it was only like 2,000 a month, 3,000 a month, 3,500, 2,000, 3,500. And I had to be okay with that, understanding that, yes, I'm in my second year or second and a half year, and I'm not making 10,000 a month yet, that's okay. You know what I mean? Like you, you may see some anomalies where people in their first year and second year are making crazy money. That wasn't me, I'm five years in. Like it took me five years, it didn't take me a year. And I want you guys to understand that the best way to build a small account is not to just get in a trade and take profit every single time you're in profit, no. But look at the percentages and look at the pip count. If you are up 30 to 50 to 70 pips and it's X amount of dollars, okay, take profit because that's 70 pips the market just gave you. It doesn't just go 70 to 90 to 100 to 200. No, it goes to 50 to 70 to back down to back to 40 to up 10 to back down to 30 because it gave you the 70 pips already. You're just trying to be greedy and get more and more and more. You got to have an actual you know, plan on like an exit plan. How much money do I want to make by the end of the week? How much money do I want to make by the end of the day if it is a trading day? And then go off of that alone. Stay consistent and grounded in your rules. And if you don't do that, you're not going to make money in the market. Like do not flip the account. Also understand that you cannot over leverage and, and use a, a high lot size because you want to make money faster. You know you have a 30 pip stop loss. You only have $300 in your account and you're going to use a 0.50 because you know with a 0.50 lot size or even a standard lot size, you're going to make money faster than you would a 0.10 or 0 0.05 or 0 .15, you know, a, a, a mini lot. You know what I mean? You got to realize that I understand you're like, you can't really focus on the money right now. So it may seem like dull where it's like, I'm only making a hundred dollars or $200, but you just made a hundred or 200 from your phone when last year you didn't even know this existed. You cannot use a 0.50 with a 30 pip stop loss with $300 in your account. 0.50, 30 pip stop loss, 50, a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars. So you're saying with a $300 account, you're okay with losing a hundred and fifty dollars. Half of your account just to potentially get $150 to $200 faster with a 0.50. That is a recipe to blowing your account over and over and over again. And the more times you blow your account, you start, I get emails all the time, people saying, you know, I'm about to quit. I'm on my last leg, X, Y, and Z. I'm asking them, how long have you been trading? Oh, three months, two months. I just, you know, I blew like four accounts. You should not be trading on a live account. There's a reason why in my course, in my academy, I don't show my broker or anything to do with taxes until the last series. I want everybody to go through you know, all three series and understand everything there is to it and then get to the fourth series and know everything about taxes, everything about brokers, my brokers, regulated brokers and unregulated, you know, the tax laws in the UK and, and in Europe and you know, the United States. Every, I don't just talk about the United States. I talk like everywhere in the world. And I don't do that until series four because if I do that in series one, People would be like, all right, I know support and resistance. I know trend lines. I'm going to jump on a live account right now. And you start losing money and then looking at me like, why am I losing money? You don't know what you're doing. 
So in conclusion, like I know you guys were expecting a market breakdown today, but I feel like this video, you know, would be more powerful. Like I said, I have five different videos in detail on this in my academy. And from the first video, I got a lot of comments saying, wow, this opened my eyes a lot, you know, understanding that if I had $500 physically in my face, in my hand today, that'd be a lot of money. And when I see $500 on my account, like in floating profit, I'm like, eh, I want more than that. And that's greed. And understand you cannot have greed. You, need, you can't be, you know, revenge trading. You can't do any of that. You can't have a million different indicators on your chart, but I get into that in my actual pure price action videos. You gotta have patience. You gotta have discipline. You gotta be consistent. Because if you can be consistent with a small account, and I'll finish off on this note, if you can be consistent with a small account, you know you can be consistent on a major account. How, why are you trying to make 100,000 a year when you've never even physically touched $10,000 in your hand? Have you ever touched $10,000? You have not. Why are you trying to aim for 100,000 and a million? You gotta, you gotta build up and build up and build up. Have you ever touched 5,000 or even, not even touched, like forget that. Have you ever had $5,000 in your account? Just open your account and had $5,000. If you had, great, cool. Now we're on to the next 10,000, but if you haven't, you gotta have building blocks, knock them off. Have a party or celebrate or go on vacation after you hit that 1,000, that 5,000, that 10,000, 25,000, 50, and then 100. Like, I celebrate all the time. My wife just got home, but we celebrated a big milestone. We're going on vacation next week, you know what I mean? For the next, I think, 20 days, whatever the case may be. Like, you guys need to, and yours don't have to be as dramatic as a vacation, but celebrate, go out to eat, do something different when you reach these milestones, because just like, I think I watched the video I was thinking of creating a video with my wife, I think five, six months ago um, in my old apartment on people in general where you have to celebrate and need some type of motivation to keep you going. I actually made a video on this in my earlier videos on my, you know, my YouTube channel. You need something to keep you going. NBA players, NFL players, they all got championship rings to keep them motivated. You know, Kawhi just got knocked out yesterday. Clippers suck, you feel me? But they got knocked out yesterday. Lakers gonna win the title. But they got a ring to, to, to focus on, you know what I mean? And we don't have anything. So we may seem like we're just going for no reason, just going up, up, up. And we never, no, you gotta stop, celebrate, then go to the next level. And you can only do that when you reach your milestones one at a time. So, in conclusion, make sure you start taking profits when the market give it to you. You have weekly goals of making $1,000 and the market gave you $1,200 and you got greedy and you wanted $2,500 so the market came back down to $400 and you closed profit with $400 and then on the next trade you wanted to get $600 more and then you lost that $400 now you're breaking even then you blew the account. Like, take your time. It's okay if you're in your first year and still struggling. I'm five years in and I'm good. When you get to your second year and your third year, it'll get better and better and better. But it'll never, ever, 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 ever get better if we try and skip the process. I'll let you guys. Oh, do not leave the video yet. Don't X out just yet. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Right now, like I said with my last video, there's a few announcements that I'll just kind of overview really quickly because the last video I went into detail with it. Secure the Swag Season 2 will start in about a month and a half. Live trading will start shortly after that where I'll be live trading on YouTube. I don't know if it'll be every day or you know every other day, but me and Austin will decide that. And most importantly, we have six days left of the flash sale before we transfer everybody over to the new Academy. Now, my exclusive members who have been on the Academy you know, previously Obviously, they're already over there but for the next six days you can get in my new academy for the same price as the old one and then after six days the prices are gonna skyrocket but those are the only announcements I have I will see you guys tomorrow for another video gang life